Welcome to the Rugged Medicine YouTube channel. Today we're going to go through adult basic life support in line with 2015 UK Resuscitation Council guidelines. As with any instructional video, please note that this presentation does not replace instructor led training. Please always ensure you follow the latest guidelines and trust policies and do not rely on this video as your only source of training. So what is basic life support? Essentially, maintaining an airway and supporting breathing and the circulation is all that encompasses BLS. Basic life support here within the UK and in other countries as well, who have a resuscitation council, is guided by the evidence and guidelines by the resuscitation council. In this case, the UK resuscitation council had their last update in 2015 and encompassed these six key areas. Initial assessment, whether the patient is unresponsive and not breathing normally, then calling 999 and asking for an ambulance. At that point, you would start chest compressions, followed by two rescue breaths, and then alternate those 30 compressions, two rescue breaths, 30 compressions, two rescue breaths, and so forth. You will continue this and add an AED into your actual proceedings and into your actions as soon as it arrives, and then proceed as the instructions and voice prompts dictate. The one missing element from this algorithm, however, is scene safety. Is it safe to approach? This has not at all been included in the algorithm and in my opinion is paramount to be checked before you approach the casualty. So keep in mind on your approach, is it safe? What is a hazard? What can become a hazard? Can I get rid of the hazard? Do I maybe have to wear PPE, personal protective equipment like gloves to protect myself? Do I maybe have to move the casualty? because they're in a place where they're going to get hurt further if I don't intervene. And if I can't do anything with a hazard, keep in mind you might have to get help in order to manage that hazard, be it the police because of aggressive bystanders, may it be the fire service because there's fire or leaking dangerous substances, for example. The important bit is you have to be a little bit selfish here because you cannot help somebody if you're getting hurt. So your own safety is the number one priority. So, now that we've established whether it's safe, we are straight into the algorithm where we have to assess responsiveness. So, hello, hello, can you hear me? Are you okay? No response there. Tap them on both shoulders. Don't shake them violently, just a proper tap to assess whether they're sleeping or actually unresponsive. If they're not responsive, we know that they're meeting the first of the two requirements of requiring basic life support. Now that we've assessed that they are not conscious or they're unresponsive, we need to assess whether they're breathing. Now, in order to assess breathing, you have to open the airway first. Now, to open the airway, you place your left hand or your right hand, depending which side of the patient you're on, on the patient's forehead, two fingers under the patient's chin from the other hand, and tilt the head back about one to two inches. This is known as a head tilt chin lift, as that is essentially what you're doing. You're then going to look, listen, and feel for breathing. Now, you hold the head open with a head tilt chin lift, place your ear above the patient's mouth and nose with a distance of about one to two inches, looking at the patient's chest and looking, listening and feeding for airflow and air movement. If the patient is not breathing normally, we fulfill the second criterion for basic life support requirements, which is unresponsive and not breathing normally, so we can proceed. So now it's time to summon some help. First things first, you need to go and get some help, which means call 999 on your mobile phone or your in-house emergency number, put it on speakerphone, and then you can carry on treating the patient. Or you might even have to leave to get some help and come back. If there is a bystander or a second person available, send them to fetch an AED, an automated external defibrillator. And please don't just say, can someone help me? People will easily ignore that. You need to pick somebody. So please pick a specific person, get you, I need your help, and send that person to get an AED, call an ambulance, and come back. Now we need to follow the circulation and chest compressions component of BLS. So we're going to expose the chest if possible, just take all the clothes off the chest, don't have to undress the entire patient, start chest compressions in the center of the chest. So in men, you can find that landmark by pulling an imaginary line from the left nipple to the right nipple and the ball of your hand with a second hand on top and start compressions. In a female patient, just divide the sternum into a halfway point from the sternal notch on top to the bottom of the sternum, roughly halfway, and that is your compression point. 
Now your speed of compressions should be about 100 to 120 compressions per minute, 30 of them in a row, followed by two rescue breaths. However, maintaining compression speed is not always easy, especially in a stress situation, you're going to be counting too fast because of the excitement and the adrenaline rush, so you need to pace yourself. Now you can follow the pace of the BG song Stayin' Alive, as you may have seen in some TV adverts for hands-only CPR, and thereby pace yourself. Nelly the Elephant, the children's song, apparently also works. However, please do not sing these songs out loud. You don't really want to freak out anybody and seem like you're happy that you're doing CPR for someone. The method commonly used is simply counting, which is one and two and three. So you're adding the and in order to slow yourself down. And once you get to double digits, simply continue with 10, 11, 12, and so forth, which should sufficiently slow you down to come close to that 100 to 120 compressions per minute in terms of speed. An alternative method is using the AED metronome. Basically, in the defibrillator and the automated external defibrillator, there's often a click or a beeping sound that will pace you and tell you when to actually press and at what speed and rate, and thereby can, you can manage your time as well. Once you've done 30 compressions, it's time for rescue breaths, which means we open the airway with a head tilt chin lift we used earlier, administer two rescue breaths with a barrier device, so a pocket mask, a face mask, a face shield, something similar, two breaths over one second each, and then straight back into 30 compressions, two rescue breaths, 30 compressions, and so forth. Once the AED arrives, the automated external defibrillator, or what's sometimes known as PADs, public access defibrillator, the ones in public places. You will just simply follow the pictograms and the voice instructions, the voice prompts of the device, and then integrate it into your basic life support. Now you'll probably see two different signs when paying attention to those around the town or the facility where you work. The sign on the left being the traditional approved AED sign, and the right one being the one that's most commonly used on public access defibrillators because according to some research conducted, the left sign with a lightning bolt in the heart was not associated by lay people, by the public, with a defibrillator. So the right sign was designed in order to give them the opportunity to more easily understand it and therefore hopefully increase the use of public access defibrillators. Now, as the final bit, here are the two references to the material I've used. The first one being Handley, who defined basic life support on one of the first slides in the British Journal of Anesthesia, and the second reference, resus.org.uk, being the UK Resuscitation Council's website where you can find the algorithm, training materials, links to courses, and so on. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't done so, please subscribe and like the video. Bye for now.